Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, are you not? You certainly are. Everybody knows about it now, right? You've been telling everybody. Everybody's going out to the neighborhoods, to your neighborhoods. Have you heard about the Pearl of Wisdom? Have you heard about it? NHL Pearls of Wisdom? It's everywhere. I know it is. I can tell by all the likes I'm getting on my channel and uh, all my videos and the subscribers oh my thank you very much for subscribing and liking the video it really helps the algorithm thing for the youtube that the algorithm is how more people in the land get to watch it so liking that is really cool i'm going to be doing a video right now again continuing series on if kane was traded to every team because the rumor in the land is that it's possible because Chicago came out and they, they if you all know this, I, if you don't know this, I don't know how you don't, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, here, here's the Chicago Blackhawks right here. They went out and said they're going to be rebuilding. They're going to rebuild. Now, they kind of indicated that they weren't going to rebuild. They were going to rebuild, but they were going to try to keep Taves, Kane, and well, that would be just silly, wouldn't it? How do you rebuild and keep huge contracts from older by people? Now, remember, Taze and Kane are only 31, 32 years old. And I kind of found it, it seemed like they might have been going the direction of picking up guys like Kirby Doc and uh, like in, in drafting and Michael Nylander and Dylan Strom, young guys, and just building around them and letting their veterans help them grow. But... They traded Crawford, and they traded someone else. They traded Crawford, and they traded Sod. And then Taves went, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody told me we were rebuilding here. And then they put out a letter to the whole land and said, oh, yeah, we're rebuilding. Just thought I'd let you know that. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> so I started a series and you can watch my last one and I'm starting in reverse alphabetical order sort of kind of the way I call it the Perlo order I'm doing it kind of reverse you can see that uh, I, I ended with Vancouver and we're talking about what if he if each team picked up Vander Kane now or a Vander Patrick Kane now, of course, Patrick Kane has a no trade clause and he can't go to, he's not going to go to every team and blah, 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 all that boring stuff. But we don't know who's on the list and he probably won't be traded for quite a while. If he's traded at all, it's possible they decide to rebuild around him and he could just say, no, nah, not going to do it. Not going to do it. I'm staying in Chicago. I don't care if you suck. One of the ways they made sure they suck is they traded Crawford and they didn't replace him. So they got like two kids going to be goaltenders. Uh, I think it's kind of Chicago did. I think it was Chicago's way of saying, yeah, you know, you guys might want to leave here. This is going to get ugly. <laughs> so I'm going to assume he does. And we're going to go to the uh, most popular team in the land, the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's who's next. Toronto Maple Leafs. If the Toronto Maple Leafs were to get Patrick Kane, well, this seems pretty unreasonable, doesn't it? <laughs> Patrick Kane makes $10.5 million a year. I probably should have showed you that, but just believe me. It's true. Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you what the heck. Ten and a half. I was right there. Look at that. Ten and a half for the next three years. There you go. Now you saw it. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs have Matthews making 11.6. Woo! Tavares is making 11, woo, for the next five years. That's cray cray. And Mitchell getting paid 10.1, buying out some unrestricted free agency years from him. That's 32 million already in your on, in the cap. In a flat cap world, seems fairly unreasonable that they pick Kane. But guess what? Dubas doesn't really care what you think, does he? Because he does things his way. And you just never know. If Kane were on the market, uh, I guess Chicago would, first of all, Nylander, right? Nylander, they'd be all over Nylander. Uh, then 
I, I mean, they just retooled their defense. Toronto did. I still don't think it's like all that fantastic. Zach Bogosian. I don't know about this Miko Lettinen much. This is a one I don't really know much about. Um, but Rasmus Sandin, I do know about, and I think he's going to be fine. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm, I want Nylander and probably Sandin. Uh, maybe like Mikhaev or something like that. Now, you say, well, no, there's no way because they don't have any cap room, blah, 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 blah. You could do a one for one. You could do Nylander and Kerfoot. And came back, and that's they only got to figure out a way to lose 500,000. But before you say no, before you say blah, it's not going to happen or whatever, just imagine if you were to remove Nylander and put Kane here. Kane, imagine Kane passing the puck to Matthews. Now, I like Nylander, I think Nylander is going to be a great player, and a lot of people he's got a lot of flack for. Is holding out for his money and all that kind of stuff like that. And then he had a bad year after he um, held out because he held out. He wasn't playing. So, you know, it took a while for him to get going. But is he Kane? Let me remind you, Patrick Kane, I think, is one of the best, maybe top seven players in the league. Certainly top seven forwards in the league. He is a Hall of Famer for sure. Cup winners. Toronto could use some cup winners in the room, I would think, right? Since I don't even think, do they have any? They don't have any. Not even Joe Thornton, who they just picked up. So Kane passing to Matthews would be absolutely exquisite. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. It doesn't make much sense, but fun to look at it. Now the next one that also doesn't make much sense. <laughs> the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are in so bad a shape uh, that I don't even think they know what they're going to do. Uh, they have, well, first of all, we should look at, we didn't even look at uh, Toronto's cap space because we already know it's empty. They have nothing. They have $2.3 million cap space. Looks good, except they have to sign uh, Mr. Sergachev, who's probably going to be demanding quite the amount of money. They have to sign Sorelli, who also is wanting to have a lot of money. And they have to sign uh, Chernak. All of them can demand a certain amount. Well, would like to. But it's possible. Here's the thing. It's possible Tampa just says to Sorelli, uh, sorry, dude, you have no arbitration rights and everything. We're just giving you a million bucks. That's it. A million bucks this year. That's all we can give you. And then, you know, in the same note, they could do something similar to that with Chernak and Sergeyev, but probably with trade one. Talking about trading one, here's Mr. Patrick Kane. Would you like yourself, uh, would you would you take a Sergeyev and say, um, they've been trying to get rid of Tyler, Tyler Johnson, but I don't really want to take a $5 million Tyler Johnson in a rebuilding, on a rebuilding team. So they're going to have to probably do better than that. Uh, this is tough. It doesn't really make, like I said, this one doesn't really make much sense. It would probably be Sergeyev and Anthony Sorelli. They could trade them both. Uh, however, then you still got $10 million to get rid of. Tampa Bay really doesn't make sense is what I'm trying to say. There's not much we can do here, but I thought I'd look at them anyways. And for the heck of it, let's say they do some voodoo magic and they happen to get Kane. Uh, you could put uh, Stamkos uh, anywhere and just put Kane in between Sorelli and Korn and you'd have Kucherov, Point, Palat, Kane, Sorelli, Kalorn, sick two lines. But like I said, I don't think it's going to work. But I said I would do every team. I'm going to do every team. You got it? You got it. Good. Okay. St. Louis Blues next. Now this would be interesting, wouldn't it? After not signing Peter Angelo. Now remember, Kane only has three years left. The main reason why they didn't sign Peter Angelo is because he wanted uh, like money till the end of the universe. So um, that's basically, they don't like giving the long contracts away, although they did so with Justin Falk, oddly enough. One, two, three, four, five. Let me 
six, seven, till he's 35. That's a rare thing for them to do. They sort of did it to Corey Krug, too. Really weird. They didn't do it to Peter Angelo, but they're going to do it for them. Let's look at their uh, cap space. Zero. Zero cap space. If they were to do something like this, and by the way, if I'm St. Louis, I'd highly recommend doing something like this. If there's one thing St. Louis has a difficult time doing or doesn't have is that big score or big player for their scoring line on the in the lineup. Most of their players are good, solid two-way guys, kind of how they built their team. But there are things that they could do. Jaden Schwartz is only 28 years old. Uh, they could put Jaden Schwartz in this Schwartz, Schwartz in this package. If I'm Chicago, I want Jaden Schwartz. I want Oscar Sundquist. Now they're youngish. You're a rebuilding team. You're just getting like three or four years younger, and that's okay. Uh, I love Oscar Sundquist. Love, 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 love this guy. Great third line center. And then go down to defense and take Vince Dunn. And that would easily be able to compensate there because Vince Dunn needs a contract. They're going to have a difficult time signing him. I really love Vince Dunn. So do they. But for a Patrick Kane, if you were to give up that kind of a package, um, it's hard. It, you'd have to think about it a lot. But um, that dynamic type of player, even though they want a cup without it, they're getting older. And having a dynamic type of player like that, so I said Schwartz and Sunquist. Oh, that's two of their top two line. But you got Robert Thomas, who can move up and play uh, possibly center. Or you could have put Braden Shen in that. Braden Shen, who's just a year older than Schwartz. And Sunquist can move in the middle, and you could put Kane here with Sunquist and Schwartz. Or Perron down here, and Kane with Riley and Safford. Sanford. I just think that for in St. This is one of those ones that would make to me would make sense for St. Louis to do something like this. Um, they all, especially like Vince Dunn is. If 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 uh, Chicago thinks as highly of Vince Dunn as I do, and they really do need help on their defense a lot, especially for young defensemen, and say Jaden Schwartz. And maybe the St. Louis's first round pick, I would highly consider that uh, if I was Chicago. And if I'm St. Louis, I think that's a heck of a play to bring that dynamic player um, into the St. Louis. Uh, this is one that might actually work. And uh, with the Kane, let's. Where is Kane from? I should have checked that out. Where's Kane from? He's from Buffalo. Oh, well, we we when we get to Buffalo, that'll be interesting. Him being American, he may say this and also getting a chance to win a cup there because st louis isn't far away from winning a cup he may say yes to that now the other problem of course is that chicago would loathe to trade him within the division that would be the biggest problem here but kane has a no trade clause so he's going to nix whatever he's going to want to go where he wants to go it actually has some feasibility is what i'm trying to say uh that would be something tell me if you're st louis fans what would you think of something like that Let's go to San Jose. San Jose. Oddly enough, this one makes a lot of sense as well. Because St. Louis is, or San Jose is in a weird position. They have guys like Eric Carlson who are making a crap load of money until the end of time. He's probably never going to be able to live up to that contract. Probably have to go on injured reserve or something. Brent Burns making enormous amounts of money. Uh, Edward Vlasic, who's falling off the vine too. They, they, their window is closing, and it's not really open at the same time. Because after that, you have young guys like Simic, Ferrero, Jacob Middleton. that are all question marks. But you've got that top three. Uh, San Jose also has Cal, uh, Couture, a uh, Vander Kane. Who are, who's making a lot of money and older. And then they got some young guys like Timo Meyer and Thomas Hurdle, Kevin LeBanc. Not a bad, not a bad top six, but not a, hey, we're going to go win the cup top six. But also not a, we're going to rebuild team because you've got too many older guys on huge contracts. They're going to be there forever. Honestly, 
they really have no choice but to go for it. So um, looking, this is, by the way, this is their, uh, this is cap friendly, by the way. Uh, yes, it's the best there. I said it. They really have no choice but to go for it here. And uh, they might as well. And then try to rebuild their rebuild. San Jose's rebuild is going to be ugly. <laughs> really ugly. So if I'm Chicago and I'm going thinking San Jose and, and Kane's okay with that, I want Timo Meyer right off the top. Timo Meyer or Thomas Hurdle. More than likely, they're going to go with Timo Meyer because they're going to need that second line center. They're probably not going to want to go the route of Thomas Hurdle. Well, let's say we argue over it and I go Timo Meyer, right wing. And your first, their first round pick in next year. And uh, whatever you can find for, uh, like, maybe Ozzy Weisblack that they just drafted. Uh, Ryan Merkley. How's he been doing, by the way? He was an attitude kid that ended up going late in the draft. He had a huge attitude. And uh, he got 76 points in 60 games with the London Knights. See how many junior players he played for? Like, crazy. Well, Pittsburgh, every time he goes to a team, they kick him off because apparently he's got a major attitude. But, yeah, you could take somebody like that. They definitely need defensemen. Could happen. Could happen. Vander Kane. Does Vander Kane have a no-movement clause? Yes, he does. Okay. So, I mean, that could happen too, but uh, not likely. They're going to want to win now, so they're going to want to keep their veterans and win now. Anyways, you would then put LeBanc down here, and you would put a top line of Kane, Patrick Kane, Logan Couture, and Evander Kane. That would be much more likely that you could win a, win a Stanley Cup or at least make the playoffs with a line like that. Even with Timo Meyer gone, uh, I, I like that team a lot better. So you never know. Could happen. Let's go to another one. Pittsburgh Penguins. Put it up here just for the hell of it. Pretty much impossible. Uh, they have no cap space. Uh, a million in cap space and still have holes to fill all over the place but taking a 10 million dollar player honestly if, if i'm chicago i don't even really want anybody jake gunsell i'll take jake gunsell since it's possible because they don't even care about their future uh jake gunsell and like marcus peterson but i think they would be loath to do that because their defense would just suck but that's what i would want and for the heck of it, we're going to do it because I really don't think this is it, it's really possible to do that. And I think I can get more somewhere else if I'm Chicago. But if you were to put Kane, Crosby, and uh, Kane, Crosby, and Zucker, Kane, Malkin, like Kane, Crosby, period, that would be just fun as hell to watch. Woo! Anyways, it's not very likely, but I thought I'd put it up there because it was cool just to see, just to imagine Kane and Crosby playing on the same line, even though Crosby's 33 and kind of on the downside of his career i'm sure they could do some pretty decent magic together for sure now finally the philadelphia flyers and this one i am a philadelphia flyers fan i'm an oiler oilers and philadelphia flyers fan and um i'm gonna be i'm gonna be interested to see what my Philadelphia Flyers fans is going to think of something like this because personally I don't think Philadelphia should be building for the future with the way their team is built. I've had some discussions with guys who think otherwise but I don't think so. As long as we're keeping Claude Giroux and uh, Jacob Voracek uh, we're not rebuilding with those contracts. Uh, we are trying to win now. So might as well try to win now. Not to mention we've got the Carter Hart one of the finest goaltenders in the land. $4 million in cap space. Almost everybody signed up. This is pretty interesting. Oscar Limblom coming back after his cancer issues that he had, and I bet you he's going to be awesome. Now, if I'm, uh, that's kind of who I'm going for. Yeah, probably, maybe one of the guys we're going for. We may get lucky and they're like, oh, I don't know how he's going to come back from the cancer and they don't want him. So, who would Philadelphia give up? I'll tell you, it would be Travis Konechny and probably Sandheim. I don't, I really don't, I loathe the idea of giving up Sandheim because our defense, the Philadelphia's defense then would be pretty bleak. We'd be depending on like guys like Gustafsson, who we just picked up for $3 million to play in the top three. 
not really the most ideal thing in the land. Um, hopefully, we could try not to give, get rid of any defense at all, but I don't see it. Other thing we could do is Joel Faraby. Joel Faraby might keep us from having to give up defense. We could give up our first, and if we do give up defense, we could give up like Friedman, uh, Friedman, German Rubitsov. Anyways, go down the list here of who you want. Just just pluck a bunch away. Take what you want. Uh, I really try not to get rid of defense unless it's Robert Hogg. I could get a, I, we could get away with that. We play Friedman in that spot. Um, but for sure, I think how if they like Farabee as much as we as I like Farabee, they just might bite on Farabee and uh, Hag first round pick. Uh, and the list goes on to uh, two first round picks. So I'll give you a first this year and next year. Uh, give you Tyson first or our, fir our Forster, the one that we just uh, drafted in a first round pick or something like that. Honestly, the problem with Philadelphia is that I don't know if we could give up enough. I think they would want Travis Sandheim and there's nothing we can do about it. I, in the end, I might end up doing that. Anyways, because Kane, Couturier, and Giroux looks way better than Voracek, Couturier, and Giroux. Uh, Farabee would be gone. Put Voracek on the left side and put and have uh, Hayes and Konechny as our second line. And we're looking sweet. Imagine Kane and Couturier banging back and forth with each other. What? That would be absolutely insane. It would give us the offense. We had problems scoring in the playoffs, if you don't remember. Not if we had Kane. So I would strongly consider it. Now, the problem, of course, is if we had to give up Sandheim, things are looking a little bleak on defense. We're really hoping that Shane Gosh to Spear bounces back. We're hoping that Eric Gustafson, at the age of 28, decides to play in the defensive zone. We're hoping, <laughs> we're hoping a lot of things there. Um, I'm not really liking the defense, but poo, whatever. It's fun. Go grab them. Have fun with it. Score a lot of goals. <laughs> it would be amazing. Anyways, I'm going to continue this series, and thank you very much, everybody, for your uh, following and all of that sort of thing. But that's my full 42%. I know, you got a little tear in your eye. You're kind of missing me already, but... We Oh, SteelFlyers.com. Go to SteelFlyers.com right now. It's going to be an incredible site. Also, I have a Patreon, don't you know? And it's called BPAL Picks. In BPAL Picks, we pick four people and they make money. And you can go there. And you can see, I we know quite a bit about the sports here, about like all the things I know about the hockey. Uh, actually, last year's NHL season, it was incredible how much money we made. Uh, so I would highly recommend you go. And do that for three dollars, uh, seven dollars, twenty-five dollars, or thirty-five dollars. You can pick your package and have fun with that. Until next time, boys and girls, have a great day. Lots of love to.